Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of King's Medley. Today we're going to look at baby goat warming barrels. Now, I will admit up front, the original video I had for actually making the barrels was lost in, uh, we'll just call it a mishap. So I have no idea what happened to that video. Uh, I went to go look for it to um, get it edited and posted and then couldn't find it. No idea where it di disappeared into the ether. So uh, what I'm gonna show you today is the finished product, but I'm gonna explain it the best I can uh, for how I built these two barrels for our baby Nigerian dwarf goats. Uh, we actually, I actually made these last year for uh, the babies, which two of which I'll show you in just a moment. Can't have a, a, a video about goats without showing some goats, right? Uh, anyway, these these barrels are just blue diesel fluid, or what we'll call blue def barrels. Um, a local school's bus garage uh, had them. They're free. They had more than enough of them, and they just want to get rid of them. So um, another... Um, goat herder in the area uh, told us about them so I went and picked up two of them last year um, our babies came a little sooner than what we were expecting last year and we didn't have any of these ready so I had to kind of scramble to to do it uh, basically the the blue death fluid that that comes in these is um, pretty easy to clean out uh, I really just th there are two caps that are on here on these two uh, just simple plastic caps you unscrew them off um, I took some water, poured some water in there, swished it around a little bit, and then just dumped it out. And then uh, the next part of the operation is to cut your hole in the side. Since our goats are Nigerian dwarfs, they're they're not really big. They're not you know like some of the other some of the other breeds can can be fairly good size. Um, the easiest way to start, I drilled a couple of holes uh, up here on the top and then took my reciprocating saw and put it in here and then just cut around um, the circle. And then once I got down here to the bottom, I drilled another hole so then I could easily get the blade to go and go across this way. And then I just came up here in the top and then just met that cut. Um, as you could tell, this one is more of a, I guess, uh, like Tom and Jerry mouse hole in the wall look. And then the other barrel was a little bit more of a square. Honestly, I could not tell you right now which one I did first. The goats don't seem to care either way. Both worked really well and did what they were designed to do, which was to provide some uh, a nice warm place for the babies to, to, um, to sleep at night or when they got chilly to go in and lay. So once you get your barrel built and you get that hole cut, your next step is going to be to get a hole cut up here on the top for your heat lamp to go into. And what I'm actually doing today is we had, I had, we had these all disassembled because of the barrels we just saw outside throughout uh, the summer and such and fall. But now that we're getting close to the time, I decided it was probably time to get these ready and kind of get them in place. So um, when the babies show up, we're, we're ready this year. Um, all these are just standard heat lamps, um, and if you put a, a um, hose clamp around there, so what that hose clamp does is basically hold this up through the hole. I'm going to show you here in just a second. I'm going to feed the uh, power cable up through the barrel and get this into place and then tighten it in, and then basically it's going to hold it up above there. Uh, so the the light can just shine right down on in, in there on the babes and it's up high enough that they don't really mess with it so uh, One piece of advice if you are doing a project like this for the lights go with the uh, The red heat lamps like that um, I made a mistake last year. I, I was just grabbing some because we were kind of in a hurry and I got the uh, there's another kind that's just more of like a white light and it's really bright. This is a little less, uh, a little less bright on the babes at night. All right, I'm gonna get things set up here and we'll get this uh, heat lamp installed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feed some twine down from up above. What that's gonna let me do is then tie onto the power cord and 
make it feeding it up a lot easier. Um, sometimes I can just crawl up inside there, reach my arm up in there and kind of feed it through, but um, <laughs> this could be a little easier too if uh, crawling around inside the barrel is not high on your list of things you really want to do. And being here in the barn with all the hay and straw we get, we have no shortage of twine, so I figured I'd just uh, do it like this this year and we'll get these installed. <laughs> Don't make the mistake I was about to make, which is to feed this through before putting the bulb in. That will leave you talking to yourself a little bit. Of course, you do have to be careful when you're feeding it through there just so you don't damage the bulb. get it up on top, I'm going to slide the hose clamp back over the power cord. And get it tightened around the base of the light. I've seen several different methods on how various people do this. Um, it's just kind of whatever works for you. I mean, there, I don't think there's necessarily a, a good, better, or best way to do it. Basically, it's just keeping the light from falling down in there, and you know, I'm just hand tightening it right now, but I'll put a screwdriver in there in a moment. So when you're done, it's just gonna be on there like that. Now typically what we'll do then as well is the power cord, when we run it up, I'll show you on this one, we don't have it hooked up yet, but basically what it's gonna do is the cord will come up out of here and I'll attach it onto this this support beam right here for the for the pen basically just to in case something happens with that hose clamp so it doesn't fall the light won't fall back in there on, on the kids so we'll, we'll attach it right here and then also um, generally I will um, put a hook in in one of these two sides and hook them on something as well just in case the moms get rowdy or the kids get rowdy, they don't knock the barrel over. Uh, just a little bit of added safety for, for moms and kids alike. So this one is pretty much done. I'll work on getting the other one ready. And I think that's where that one's going to live. So what I'll do is I'll get that light done next. And then we'll get it kind of secured and ready and... You can kind of see how that process goes. All right, um, we're going to work on this barrel, but before we get started, I want to apologize for the munching sounds you're going to be hearing. Um, this is why. <laughs> the uh, last year's babies, which are these two, it's Stella and Ivy, are taking this opportunity to get into the hay that the kids left stacked up there where they could reach it. Um, we do have a hay box uh, mounted there in the wall that they get into, but you know, since this is here and all, it's a perfect time. Apparently, um, they want to put on a show for me being out here and munch on their hay while I'm working. So you'll hear the munching sound, I'm sure. That is what it is. All right, going through the same routine here. I've got the, the, uh, getting the twine tied on to the power cord. And I already have the bulb installed in this particular heat lamp. Just lower down in here. Get this tied on.
if we had more space, I would, we would just leave these barrels intact all year long. But you really don't have the space to store them inside the barn in the off season when we're not using them. So it is easier for us just to keep them, uh, just to take the lights out of them and then just store them outside. sure this is where this corner is where we're going to keep this barrel. I'm going to go ahead and get this cord ran up here. What I usually do is kind of just put it in a little bit of a, not a tight knot, just kind of a loose knot. So it's just an extra, that, that extra layer, layer of security I talked about earlier just to help keep it in place in case um, the crowd gets a little rowdy in here. And also make sure we gotta keep the cord back out of the way from the goats who would love to chew on it, given the opportunity. I'll plug it in here just to make sure we've got light. And we have light. Now, once the, once, the uh, once my kids, Kieran Hunter, actually get this pen ready, it's um, this on the floor that you see now is just kind of a mixture of hay and straw just because this is where we were storing some extra bales um, over the uh, over the fall so they'll add more in here and actually make this proper proper bedded stall for the mom that's going to be in here and also have a little bit of straw inside the barrel for the kids so that is our warming barrels and here are the girls and there's the other mom out there as well both very pregnant and uh, about to the point where they're ready to to have kids these two really don't know what's in for them but they'll they'll discover soon enough what it's like to have siblings thanks for watching this episode hope it was informative or at the very least entertaining uh, as I mentioned earlier, we will have uh, some more episodes coming up here with the baby goats once they're born. Um, debating on whether or not we'll actually have a video of one of them being born, it kind of depends on when they decide to have babies. We're hoping everything goes smoothly this year. Let's cross our fingers and we'll hopefully have some good videos for you of the baby goats once they're here. Until next time, thanks for watching.